Change the name. <laughs> 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 name ever. Can you turn it off the live stream for now? Why? Because this is all recording. It so like when the record, we yeah. can trim up the recording after. No you can cut the video. Yeah, we can take down the video and then fix it. Yeah, but like if you just start it when it's supposed to start, then you don't have to do anything. You close the live stream and it's over. Just let Yasha do what he wants to do. Just get, just get the camera to try about it. <laughs> That's the hard part. Yeah. Well, you know, you, no, no pain, no gain. Exactly. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta struggle a little bit. Did Yasha just say exactly? Check, check, check the channel. I wish it was just like a regular tripod. Do you, do you have a, yeah. Oh, actually, I do. Um, give me a sec. Hold on. Uh, Yo, can you can you toss this like it's like stuck? But yeah. No, it's not that it's not tilted down, it's not. Um, it needs to be a tilt tilted up in the no, first. No, 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 he's talking about the screen so you can just see it. You can't. Like, I can see it from here. Yeah. It's just, it's not the table, I feel yeah. kind of uncomfortable. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's my. Why are we streaming from here? What's wrong with doing it from here? Oh, it's too low. Okay. Can someone hold the back of this chair while I journey? Yes. Okay. Does this zoom out? Oh. oh. There we go. It was zoomed in all the way. Okay, now, now, now turn left. Turn left. Do you just want the monitor? Or oh, you want the people here. Yeah. I can no longer see. Okay, well, come here. All right, Victor, you can see here. Just like your arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a terrible place. It's a terrible place. Alright, cool. You guys are going to get started. No, like that. Yeah. 
I'm gonna get I'm gonna run down because he's the extension table, but can you plug that into the camera? So So they've done some initial work, but there's a whole, this project is just in the very beginning, and I'm super excited for you to work with them and you guys on the queue, but this queue is really um, maintained and kind of spearheaded by, um, by two of the 225 core staff who you're going to get to know today. Um, so Nathan and Jenna are going to give you an awesome presentation on how to get involved with the queue. I'm going to actually work on a uh, pull request with you guys, so I'm going to get started working on coding, and Nathan and Jenna is going to do some awesome stuff and get you up to speed on the queue. Hey everyone, I'm Nathan. CS program. Um, we've been on two different five staff for this is my third semester, second? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We've been here a while. Um, and so this is kind of the project that we have been spearheading this semester. Um, Wayne had done a little bit of initial work on this prior to the semester, um, but around uh, February of this year, we really started to pick up development um, and get something that was shippable. And we launched the new queue right around the time the Shara certificate expired, which was uh, good timing, I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've been working on this for a couple of months now. Um, has everyone here used it in one of their classes before? Awesome. Um, hopefully you're enjoying it at least as much as Shara, if not a little bit more. Um, so yeah, uh, just a little bit about the format today. Um, this is kind of the first thing like this that we're running or that um, the Illini, Illini Hackers is, uh, is running. Um, so we're, bear with us to kind of like figure out what works best for this kind of workshop. But what this is going to look like is um, I'm going to give like kind of a brief high level look at you know, what the queue is, why you care about it, um, some of the architecture and technology behind it, and then we'll work into, go into more of like a hands-on part where we get you up and running with the queue and grow machine, um, kind of do a little brief guided walkthrough through the code base so you can get your bearings, and then hopefully you guys can start coding and maybe get a PR in there for tonight. So, the queue. Uh, it sounds like you all know what this is. It's used to facilitate, um, currently used to facilitate office hours, um, self-advising offices, CS, and staff uh, have both started using um, the queue for managing advising appointments. Um, the queue can track uh, quality interaction with students. Um, and this is just the beginning. This way said, there's a lot of room for
huge uh, movement, and you know, at least in the past decade, it's only going to keep getting more important in uh, in this industry. And so, um, you know, the benefits of open source is that you get lots of people working on this, and you can build a community around the software that's being used, you know, by lots and lots of people, um, you know, both here and potentially other universities. Hi, Cynthia. Um, <laughs> And so, you know, we need to develop kind of an active community now um, to keep this piece of software going into the future. So, uh, yeah, that's the cube. That's why we should care. Now we can talk a little bit about what this looks like in code. And this is going to be extremely high level. I'm not going to show any code. This is mostly going to be just kind of telling you guys the different technologies that we're using on the queue, um, a little bit about, you know, the, the client server model we have set up. Um, but my opinion is that the best way to you know, get acquainted with the code base and with technologies is to use them and not watch someone talk about them for half an hour. So this is going to be just real, real brief, a couple lists of things, and then we can get on to um, getting this on your own machine. So uh, it's written as uh, full stack JavaScript app, both on the client and server. Um, server, um, some of the technologies used there, uh, Node, obviously. Um, Next.js is a relatively new framework that um, makes it really easy to uh, do client-side routing um, with server-side rendered applications. Uh, if those words don't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. Um, Express is what we use to handle the, uh, the API layer, so um, we'll talk about that in a sec. SQLize is our uh, ORM to interact with the database, and Socket.io is what we use to send real-time updates of like new questions or uh, question status updates and so on to the client. And in the client, we're also using Next.js. Um, we use React for all the, the uh, view rendering. We use Redux for state management, which plays really nicely with React. And then also Socket.io, of course. Um, lots of buzzwords, not much technical detail, but we can get into that uh, once you guys are actually coding. So, really high level overview. Um, the client and the server are you know, communicate via this this RESTful API, um, and this is nice because you know in the future we could maybe you know have uh, an Android app or an iOS app or something that um, you know uses the exact same interface you came with the server. Uh, authorization is implemented at the API level, and so we're using. Um, I'm sure all of you are familiar with Shibboleth. That's what you use to log into everything here. So we're using uh, Shibboleth for authentication, which is a nice change from. Uh, from the char queue. Um, client maintains a copy of the state from the server in its its own store, and so that means the client can be really responsive. Um, you know, we can really easily update data when we get it, you know, change it like deltas from uh, the WebSocket. Um, state can be updated either as a result of user action, so people joining a queue or adding a question or joining core staff or something like that. Um, it's also updated with like basically events that are pushed from the server, say someone else added a new question or someone joined this queue, and that's what lets all the clients stay in sync with each other. Um, and that's you know a big part of this is that you know you don't want to have to refresh the page to see where you are in the queue. You want that all to be in real time. Um, and yeah, so every you know both admins and course staff and students, everyone gets like the same client JS. We just have. Um, basically just flags that turn stuff on and off, different buttons and views and whatnot, depending on if you're um, uh, you know, a student or an admin or, or so on. So, um, talk briefly about contributing. Uh, we've got um, our GitHub organization. So this is a brand new organization created a few weeks ago, github.com slash Illinois. Uh, this is where we're going to be um, working on the queue and um, some other fun projects that we're, we're uh, starting up around here. Um, we also have a new Slack organization with a channel devoted to the queue and some channels for other things um, that we're going to be working on. So if any of you have contributed to any kind of project on GitHub before, this flow will look familiar to you. So to make um, you know, a contribution, you're going to first, first fork the repository, so this basically gives you your own copy of um, the code, but you have the permissions to make commits to it and make changes and so on. Um, and then once you've been over some code, you can commit those to your fork, um, add tests and the change log and, uh, and docs and all of that stuff. And then you'll submit a pull request 
back to the main Q repo. And so then Jenna or myself or someone else, one of the core maintainers, um, you know, will take a look at it, offer you um, feedback, code reviews, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then once test pass and everything, and um, one of us are happy with it, we'll merge it, and it'll get deployed within uh, a week or so. Um, so it looks like a lot of steps, but it's a pretty uh, simple process once you're used to it. Um, so now I'm going to pass it off to Jenna, who's going to lead you through getting it up and running on your own machine. Yeah. Okay, so um, the first thing you need to do is you have to get Node. Um, and first you should check if you already have it, because maybe you downloaded it in the past and you don't remember. So you can do the Node-V. Um, and if it pops up a version, that means you have it. If it gives you an error, that means you should download it. Um, if you're on a Mac and you have Homebrew installed, you can use um, the brew command. And if you're on Ubuntu, you can use the two commands underneath. And also, if neither of those apply to you or you want to just download it directly, the link underneath will lead you to the download page. And if you guys want to do that now, I can wait a minute. And if anyone needs help, you can raise your hand and we can come look. So I'm going to get Yasha to post um, a link to the, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yasha just posted a link to the slides on the Facebook event if you uh, had RCP to that. Um, so you can kind of go through this at your own pace if you want. Um, but, okay, I think we're going to move ahead. Yeah. Okay, so when you download Node, you should get something called npm. Um, you can also make sure you have this by um, doing the same command. And then to update it, you use the command underneath. And then, and then you can clone the repository. Um, Nathan posted the larger link if you can't see that. And then just cd into the queue and run npm install to uh, install the dependencies. And then you should basically be set. The, the link to install, or the link to the repo, the link to the repo is also on the Facebook event, if you've seen that, so. And once you've done all those steps, you can run npm run dev, and that should get the server started. And then in your browser window, you can just do localhost, uh, colon 3000, and that should open up a copy of the queue that you can play with. And the database should be empty, so you'll have to create a course to play with and a queue to play with, but you can just do that through the, uh, the UI. So where's everyone at right now? Um, who has Node installed? Yay. Who has cloned the queue? Who has the queue running? You go, dude. <laughs> um, so we'll wait like another minute here. Um, ideally, I'd like everyone to be like walking through the code when I do this. Um, so I'll wait for everyone to at least get the, the code from the machine. I'm getting uh, an error thrown or an exception thrown. It's like cannot find uh, any procedure. And yeah, if you have questions and need help, you can raise your hand and we'll come by. So I, so I have NPM oh, and I just updated. Okay. Right. So you want to, um, before you run NPM install, you want to change into the.